Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 22nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today looked at more PowerShell backdoors that are not detected by any of the virus scanners in VirusTotal right now. Now, VirusTotal, of course, only does sort of a static analysis without running any of the code, but it yet again shows how simple obfuscation techniques, like in this case, just replacing a couple strings and then base 64 decoding the remainder does result in malware that antivirus has difficulties detecting. The malware itself, once uh, unpacked and analyzed, turned out to be an information stealer. It looks at a number of different software packages and then exfiltrates any data it may find. While not really a crypto miner, the malware does appear to call itself gold miner and does connect to a host at mywire.org in order to establish a command and control connection. And we've got updates from Apache, no, not for Log4j, but for the Apache HTTP server. And that brings it up to version 2452, which fixes two vulnerabilities. One is a possible null dereference or server-side request forgery in the forward proxy configuration. That actually is the one that I would almost uh, rate more importantly, even though it's really only moderate. The other one is rated high. It's a buffer overflow when parsing multi-part content, but it only affects mod Lua, which uh, I don't really see that terribly often. That's why I actually would consider the moderate vulnerability more important here than the high one. Nevertheless, none of this sort of warrants an emergency update, in my opinion. Wait for your Linux distribution to come up with updated packages. And Red Team Pentesting published a blog post with details regarding two backdoors in the Auswald compact uh, PBX system. The first backdoor is actually a second account. The username is just the name of the village in Germany where the company is headquartered. And then there's also a second password for the admin account. Both of these backdoors are hard coded into the firmware and can only be fixed by applying an update that has been released and can be accessed on the company's website. And Cisco's TELUS research team posted a blog post with several vulnerabilities in Garrett metal detectors. These are metal detectors like you often find at airports and similar locations. And the vulnerability is in the Garrett IC module, which as you probably imagine, does provide network connectivity to these walkthrough metal detectors. Vulnerabilities include buffer overflows and uh, authentication bypass vulnerabilities that allow code execution, reading, writing files, or just shutting down network connectivity. Of course, with these vulnerabilities, settings could also be changed, uh, like, for example, the sensitivity of uh, these metal detectors, which then, of course, may render them ineffective. So yet another interesting thing connected to the internet. And just a quick obligatory update on Log4j. Nothing really all that groundbreaking new. There is now a red team and blue team challenge around Log4j in the holiday hack challenge. They updated that uh, today or yesterday, I believe. And a number of uh, companies and organizations also announced that as a precaution, they shut down part of their services. For example, the US Patent Office. And it's actually not a terrible idea given the holidays that, well, maybe instead of forcing overtime on people, just uh, shut down a couple systems and actually take the weekend off and worry about uh, patching once you are refreshed and have time to take care of it uh, better. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And as I said before, there may be a short podcast tomorrow, but otherwise uh, talk to you on Monday. Bye.